October 5th, 2020, Bruins, uh, regularly scheduled Bruins Select Board meeting to order. Um, with us tonight on my far left is Justin Lawrence, Bo Smith on my left, John Quinn on my right, uh, Tom Badowski is here, town administrator, and Diane Isabel, town treasurer. Uh, See, we have some additions and changes to the agenda. And public comment. Is there any public comment? First report that one. Okay. Um, we had the annual audit. The field work was done on September 17th and 18th. I've had no issues so far. Um, I have delinquent tax notices under $5. I have 14 of them that total $16.08, and I would like the select board to abate those at all possible. Is that anywhere down below? Right here. No. Can I do the usual I guess I'm waiting for some of Do you have a motion on this? I make the motion to abate the 14 tax bills. Totaling $16.08. $16.08. Second. Any further discussion? Diane, why are we abating them? Or They're under $5. A lot of them are $0.02, cents, $0.10. Cents. A couple of them are a couple dollars. It costs more to chase the money. Yeah. Okay. If you'd like to look at them, you can write <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Is that it? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, I did get the preliminary um, budget for the school districts, and I can tell you that our uh, fee for the entire year went up by $117,621. So our preliminary last year for the schools was $6,703,494, and this year $6,821,118. And if you'd like, I can email you a copy of this report. That is all I have. Okay, yeah, thank you, Diane. Uh, let's see here. We'll skip right to Fisher Road Colbert. Okay. So, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Robert Clark. I'm an engineer with Otter Creek Engineering. Um, and we're working on the sewer project here in town. Um, I know you guys have had some discussions about. Fisher rolled forward over the past couple of meetings, and unfortunately, I don't have the best news to update you. You've seen the road has been closed. Uh, the culvert collapsed, um, making the road basically impassable um, and, and certainly unsafe. Tom, myself, um, representatives from Dubois and Brad met out on site to review what options might be available. We met with um, the state of Vermont River management engineer, Jaron Borg, um, and talked through what we could do in this emergency situation. Um, unfortunately, now that the thing has completely failed, um, the options are somewhat limited. You can put a new culvert in um, that basically meets the same size that's there right now, which is roughly 12 feet in diameter, um, and that would last for uh, it would it would be acceptable to the state for a period of two years. Um, but because that culvert's failed, they want it to meet their current design standards, which require. Um, a structure that spans somewhere between 30 and 40 feet in width um, as a permanent solution. Um, we had received an estimate on a 12-foot round uh, culvert that was the same length as what's there. It's about 135 feet long, and the cost of the material alone was about $95,000, um, and estimated somewhere between $200,000 and $250,000 to have it installed. By the time we're done um, dealing with this, this stream bypass, excavating, placing the culvert, backfilling, and then paving and resetting all the guardrails that are there. So that's kind of where things are at on that end. Um, and we literally just got that. We uh, gave that some, some consideration Thursday because uh, you may or may not know Richardson Road culvert is also. Uh, uh, deteriorated and needs replaced uh, so so the thought when we were Thursday was maybe place this this 14 foot culvert there now uh, while 
it gives us two years to plan for the financing and the ultimate cure for Fisher Road. And then when we exhumed that culvert, take that culvert over to, to uh, Richardson Road. Uh, the, we spoke to the engineers working on the Richardson Road, Granger, Granger Engineering out of Waterbury, Friday, and uh, they said that the state's design, the state's going to require a very similar uh, replacement of the Richardson Road as we're looking at Fisher Road, an open bottom, a, 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 a additional culvert won't, won't be allowed there. So, sort of our thought of, of reusing the, the temporaries really went off the table after Friday's conversation. Yeah, I think unfortunately what the state's looking for is what they call bank full width, which is a measurement that they take of what the natural stream width would be in any given area. So the measurements that they took at Fisher Road along that brook, somewhere between 30 and 40 feet, at Richardson Road, which is not too much further back, it's somewhere between 20 and 25 feet. Um, and they haven't settled on a final number. Um, and as you go further back towards Berlin Pond, it would be less. Um, there is a value in those 12 to 14 foot culverts. They do get put in in other places. Um, and certainly putting something in would allow you to open up the road back to the hospital this year and give you the opportunity to leave it in place as a, as a detour while you're doing the permanent solution, putting putting footings in, dealing with, with whatever the finished uh, structure needs to be. But, um, it's certainly a lot of money and, um, and worth the discussion. Tom and I discussed other options that might be available. Um, I shared the select board the half pipe idea. Yeah, yeah um, and I think the risk with that is that if you have, I think I, I went back through my notes and kind of looked at the regulations one more time. The only risk with putting in a structure that's smaller, significantly smaller than what you have right now, is if you have a significant flood event, you may be compromised from a FEMA funding standpoint. Um, so that, that's something to consider when you're when you're weighing the options. But, but that's not on half pipe. That's not on the. No, that's that's on a smaller right. temporary place. temporary place. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So the other thing that the contractors are working on is pulling together a, you know a good estimate on what a finished product you know a large span structure might cost um, either a concrete arch or a, or a metal um, uh, structure and right now uh, I didn't have an estimate before I came in here I think they're still kind of working through it things obviously get more complicated from an engineering perspective when you start putting all the weight on you know, some strip footings, and you're talking about a much larger structure, um, I would certainly advise you if that's the direction you're going that you, you hire someone to look at the soils before you get too far, because I have seen where um, poor soils can result in, you know, that thing failing prematurely, um, because it is much closer to a bridge. Um, it might not be the traditional kind of I-beam bridge that you've seen, but the span length and the weights are certainly comparable, so. One of the things that's challenging there is the presence of several water lines, uh, force mains, other town infrastructure um, in that area. It's going to be a sewer line. Yeah, and I think simply replacing it with a traditional bridge with like a concrete deck and a paved surface probably doesn't make the most sense there because there's a lot of roadway cover between the existing culvert and, uh, and the top of the road, which allows you to have those buried utilities in there. You don't have to have added frost protection or heat traces or any of those things for those utilities. So I think looking at a permanent solution, you want to try and see if you can keep it um, similar in that manner so that you don't have a lot of exposed pipes. Your sense of cost, I mean, of what we know now, what's the, what's the, the, the quickest and the least expensive for the town? So probably the least expensive. I just stopped down at the site tonight and took a look. They they pulled the pavement off to get an idea of what was there for gravel. There's a lot of really good gravel there, and I think if you were asking me what the what the simplest least expensive solution would be, it'd probably be to put that 12 foot culvert back in there. It's going to be expensive, but I think you could reuse a lot of the gravel that was there 
you could pave it and open the road back up to the hospital this year. And that culvert would allow you to leave the, uh, the water running through it while you've got the permanent solution there. So I think there's some advantages to, to moving forward with that. Dubois had estimated that cost, you know, around 250 to 300,000, I think. Um, yeah. And it'll depend on exactly how much has to go in. A lot of that guardrail over there was really bad. But, you know, they did their best to try and save the pieces that were salvageable, but it's one of those things when you start taking it apart <laughs> and it's already bent, it's hard to get it to go back into the shape that it wants to be in. So there might be some new guardrail that might be needed there. Um, we did get the road opened up. I'm sure you saw we were able to pave last week on the Payne Turnpike North project, so at least it's less of a detour for vehicles going to the hospital at this point. But certainly it would be a concern to have to have an extended detour for people traveling to the hospital up, up that area, so so, ambulance service and such. Would it, um, if you did the call the bell road you were just talking about, the initial piece, get it open? That would, would that, what would that be for a cost saving on the final project? Because you wouldn't have to read you to the water or anything. We're saying it would save you that. So there's going to be some sort of cost savings on the overall project. Certainly pays it after two years. So I'm curious what that may be. So the estimate right now, you know, it, it, it all, a lot of it comes down to the time of year, frankly, when you're working um, in a stream. So right now it's not really the best time to be doing this type of work because. I mean, we all think of spring as a wet time of year, but fall is a really wet time of year, and you get some pretty good rain events. And so their estimate that they gave us included the, the use of two um, eight-inch pumps to bypass the stream, because they have to physically pump the water from one end to the other. They also have to put in some type of coffer dam system. They're going to put sheets and sandbags and try and dam that up. That is estimated around seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars to go through that whole process depending on how many sheets they actually need and, and what that is whether or not they really run two pumps full time for the for the duration of installing that culvert so if you were looking at a cost savings in the future i would say you would save the that cost of of needing to pump water and drive sheets um, you still might need to drive a few sheets depending on what the final shape and orientation of your new structure is one of the things that's kind of unique is the culvert doesn't cross the road perpendicular, it crosses on a skew, which is one of the reasons why it's 135 feet long. Um, the bigger you put in, the taller you put in, the shorter you can make it. You know, you won't have to be 135 feet long anymore. You can have wing walls like you've seen off of bridges and grade around them. So you'll be able to save a little bit on structure length and kind of work around and, and dam the earth, earth up around. But if you had to, if I had to give you a number, I'd say probably seventy-five thousand to a, to hundred that you would save on the future project by putting something there. So then that cost would be roughly, would you say, two hundred those three hundred thousand for the temporary solution? I think rough, roughly, you know, three hundred or so. Yeah, they didn't give us a formal estimate. They gave us a a range and then uh, a, a kind of material kind of approach. So. This half pipe here, mm -hmm. that is um, how to, for that to work in that situation, how high does that have to be? Um, they make all kinds of different uh, heights and spans of okay. those. So I just did one that was 32 feet, um, that exact same thing. It was 32 feet wide by nine feet tall. Okay. Yep. Um, and in that case, it was really bad soil. Like you couldn't, you could barely stand on this stuff. So we had to truck in this really expensive lightweight fill from Albany, New York, to make it work. Um, but they're, they they can make those shapes, whatever, whenever you need. And height-wise, that won't be a, a restriction for you guys because you're going to have so much more water that can go through there by going from 12 feet to 32 that the height. You know, a nine foot height would almost be guaranteed to be more than adequate for anything that you can see. I just didn't want to take and have the, a new structure there taller than the old structure. I think you'd want to be close to be exactly to your point. I think you'd want to be very close to what's there. It would give you a lot of cover on top of it and yeah. um, plenty of room to put those other utilities back. Now that's a that's a corrugated metal one yeah. that you're looking at there. Um, they make precast ones that also have similar 
shape and geometry. And I would say you could expect a, a pretty fast structure to last 60 to 100 years. Um, they say that those aluminum ones are a 50 year product. I don't know if anybody has any idea how old the one that's there now is. For the, for, um, but certainly steel rusts when it's exposed to water. And if you get consistent water that's coming up, what it'll do, and, it, and there's certain installations throughout the state, but it'll rust away at the bottom where it's connected to the footing. So that can happen if, if they're not properly designed to. So the upside of doing a permanent fix now is you don't have to spend the 170000 what, or dollars $200,000 in the temporary. That's correct. So um, this, this arch structure, can this be something we get permitted and start construction here? And when, when do you think it could be serviceable? So that's a really good question. So um, right now, the state, you know, per our meeting, you don't have to get any permits from them to do an emergency repair. Yeah. Um, if you were going to put in a permanent solution, they're going to want to see you go through their permitting process. So there's some time in pulling together the engineering plans, doing the soil evaluation, um, submitting the permit applications. I would say you'd be very hard pressed to get that submitted before Christmas this year, just based on uh, weather and, and the need to kind of go through it linearly, step by step. That being said, if you did get that done, I, I think you could start construction in the you know, early summer next year. So that'd, be, that'd be keeping this road closed for six months. That'd be the, yeah. So, and, and I think so, if you so, try to do so it. So you don't, you don't need a permit, permit to do an emergency. No. So why can't the half pipe be the emergency? It could. But if you put it in and they critique it, or they have concerns about the geometry of it, oh, okay. yeah. um, you run the risk of having to take it back out. Right, and right. I think that's more that's more expensive yeah, than yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the round one that we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, those are very good questions. Mm -hmm. And I think, to your point uh, about cost, um, Trying to do this, you can certainly you can do anything. It's, you know, contractors can do anything. They could work in the winter to to open that up. You could certainly be working in February. It's just going to cost a lot more to do that. Um, what's the risk of with no traffic on the culvert that's in there now? What's the risk of that collapsing and doing damage to the uh, water mains? You uh, certainly asking a question that I'm not as comfortable answering because I don't know exactly what the condition of that culvert is, but um, uh, a pour is probably an understatement. I think uh, if it does collapse, there's a good chance that the water mains and the force mains would also be compromised there. Um, water lines are just 20 foot lengths of pipe, so. Uh, uh, you've been out there, we've had one compromised today. We're leaking water out of there now. Really? So it already did then. So to, to answer your question, I think if it settled more, you know, those, they're just a bell and socket type pipe, and yeah, um, totally on it. yeah, and so it doesn't take much to start pulling them out of socket and creating issues. Uh, the force made is a little different, and the new force made that we're putting it's in the is key, uh, for you to see, yeah. yeah, it has no joints there, so that shouldn't have an issue. But the water joints are a little different. We talked about, and may recall, Brad, that you, that because it's such a you know, it's going to be worked on a lot that area. Maybe replacing that section of the water on the H T E and you know, take away that bell end. So, if we have it in any of this, but it, it shouldn't be an issue. So, one of the biggest things is the pieces that they have to put in, whether it's the temporary 12 foot or the permanent. It's going to require big equipment, crane, set these pieces, and it's going to require all of those utilities to be temporarily removed. So, one of the things I got to talk to Tom about is. You know how to maintain water service to Northfield Savings Bank while that's happening. How to make sure that we don't interrupt water service to the hospital through their dedicated line, uh, because all of those pipes really have to come out or be supported in some manner that they won't be disturbed. But I think um, the cult. I was really hoping you guys were going to be able to make it through the winter without that thing collapsing. Um, I, I think just that quick rush of rain went down through. It, it's, it was missing the entire bottom, so as soon as it started eroding the dirt, the whole thing just settled. 
Um, and that's going to continue to happen anytime you get a rain event, you know. The, with the, so, so the question I think, Brad, here's the question I think that you guys need to decide. Um, if, if it's only financial, right? If it's only financial, your consideration, you that road would be closed for six or eight months. Can that road be closed for six or eight months? That's something you guys have to decide, I guess. Um, there is a way around. It, it's, you know, um, we could bring the hospital into the conversation, but I think I know where they would land on this, this issue. Um, so so I, I think that's what you guys have to talk because the savings roughly is about $300,000 in the town by closing it now, shoring up our, our utilities, and getting, getting the permits in and getting on it early in the spring. Once, once, once the permits are placed and weather allows, it's not that long of construction, correct? Right? There's a precast, it's, it, you know. The biggest thing is getting the approval to order the structure, yeah. you know, so it, pretty much everything is going precast these days. So the precast suppliers in Vermont, New Hampshire, and, you know, New York, upstate New York are really busy. So if you don't get on their schedule early, you can sometimes be 12 to 16 weeks out, similar to some of the precast yeah. products we saw in the sewer project. Yeah. So you want to order it in, January, February, March time frame so that when things are dry in June and July, you can put it in and, and fix it. I mean, or, or May and June, excuse me. Yeah, so. so the question is, you, uh, we don't have any hard and fast numbers. We don't. I was hoping to even have a good estimate on what something like that might cost, but we haven't been able to get the cost of the components and Ray needed the weights of them to be able to estimate what the crane might cost and yeah. work through the specifics. So. so what we need to do then to make this timely is to get our engineering done and get the permits in. It certainly would help to go forward with that if you're going to go with a permanent solution right away. Um, I think I mentioned at the beginning, if you did the temporary thing, it would give you a two-year window to work that out. Uh, but it costs 300000 Yes. Yep. And whatever future cost is, right? I was just going to say that the longer, longer we wait, the more likelihood that the price will... That's a possibility, too. Yeah. It's not a possibility. It's <laughs> a high probability. Yes, it is. Yeah. So then, if we were to approve the approve the uh, permanent fix, it all hinges on getting the uh, getting the uh, engineering done. Yeah, I would think that would be and the, the most important thing to do. Right the bore samples. Yes, the bore samples and, and a geotech for it. How swiftly have you seen that go through when others have been in situations such as ours? Yeah, we had some good conversations with Jared about that process. I think it, it certainly can go through pretty quick. Um, but quick is relative because they need all the information to make the determination. Um, but I think what we were talking about when we submit something somewhere around 10 days for them to administratively approve it, and then two to three weeks after that, they issue your permit. So it's not a huge time frame. But they require all of the engineering and the upfront work to be submitted with that initial application, even even in an emergency situation. So how long is that? What's the what's that? Well, I, I called. Um, so we don't do our our company doesn't do soil boring type stuff, geotechnical work. So I called a few companies that we worked with in the past. There were a couple that could probably get to that within the next two to two weeks or so, um, and and start working on it um, to get the answers that the precasters need to you know, finalize their, their numbers. Um, and then our, like the regular civil site type engineering after that is fairly quick, really, especially for a structure like that. Um, I would say another two to three weeks after that. 
So the grand scheme, not a lot of time in between engineering and, and permitting. It's, it's, move that, quick. Yeah. it's waiting on the season. That, that, uh, yeah. yeah, that's the biggest thing. Because really what, what happened is we're talking about roughly six to eight weeks to do the engineering on an aggressive tunneling. So that puts us two months out here into Thanksgiving. Okay, um, The precast at best would be eight to 12 weeks out. And that's assuming that they haven't had any issues and you really wouldn't want to order something. I think those types of structures that you're talking about, roughly 200 plus thousand dollars for just the pieces. Mm -hmm. That doesn't include any. How long does it take that concrete to cure before you use it? They cure it on site at the precasting frame. Yeah. And it's cured before it ships so you can set them. It, it usually only takes about a day or two to physically assemble these. But a lot of it is the upfront work and dealing with the water and digging and all that stuff. But the actual assembly takes about a day, day and a half. And what about the footings? The footings can be um, either precast or cast in place. They have a groove in them uh, so that all the arch pieces set right in the groove. And you just got to be really accurate with how they're laid out. But um, typically, uh, most contractors in Vermont that I've worked with want to cast in place them. So they'll use um, a quick set concrete, a high early strength concrete, and you can usually start backfilling within seven days. You can set the, set the components on and start backfilling and have to really amount of strength to do that. And I think I could, I, I haven't mentioned it to Tom, but I think we can have, based on the conversations that they've been having, working together estimates, I think you could have a decent estimate on the permanent solution by the next or meaning, you know, that an actual number to move forward, like kind of what you're thinking, if that's the direction you're going. Um, I think Tom's point was whether or not you wanted to open the road, because Dubois is obviously still working on the sewer project that we have here. They have the equipment and the ability to, to do a temporary fix if that's the direction you wanted to go. And that could certainly get done a lot quicker uh, if, if you wanted to spend the money. Um, so it's entirely up to you all. hard to take and jump in here without any numbers. It is. I, if I had to guess, and, and this would just be a guess because I haven't even looked at the um, how much digging would be required, but the metal one that I was telling you about that we just did this summer that was 475000 for the same structure, and it didn't have nearly as much digging, and there were no other utilities in the way. So I, I think you're probably 750000 or more for a permanent solution there. Um, and that's just a really, that's a, that's a guess, at, you know, just knowing what the site conditions are. I haven't done anything specific. But that's a lot better than, we were talking about a full-on bridge here about that long ago, which was several million dollars. Yeah. So you're saying roughly, Three quarters of a million for a, a precast solution, permanent solution, or roughly a million dollars, a little bit more for a quick fix, and then a permanent solution down the road in two years. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't know how to go about this. We got to taking. I mean, well, first off, let's hear a consensus from the board if we want to take and do the temporary fix or if we want to do the permanent fix without worrying about the temporary. The savings of 300000 plus. I'm a proponent of the permanent fix. I think the permanent fix seems reasonable. Yeah. Come on. Yep. Okay, so now the next thing we'll do to do is uh, how to get this started. It's hard to pass a motion with no no hard money. Uh, well, I think what you, you you don't make a motion until your next meeting, right? When we have some definitive numbers, but well, we have a consensus that we're going to do the permanent fix up front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we can do is um, okay. I would recommend getting a price from Dubois to temporarily address these utility lines that are there. And that's what we're, we're doing some of that work now. Yeah. The so the water line has been compromised. Yep. And is that out of the water sewer budget? 
or is that? I hope not. From, from rate payers? I, I, I don't think so, but but that's a discussion you guys can have with the, with the public work board. Mm -hmm. but the, the public work board owes the select, select board uh, I think $180,000. So, and they've been paying off that. So, yeah, maybe there's some. Yeah. You would take, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just thinking, Dubois is over there because of a water break originally, right? Water line break. Bro, but no, no sewer. All the oh, there. Culvert. The sewer goes across there. What? Well, and they're there now because the, the, the culvert is. The culvert washed out, and the, the water might pull the cars now. Right, but before that, they were originally there for sewer. Sewer. Yeah. Right, and that's when, and then we discovered that there was a culvert issue. Yeah. Well, the, the, the culvert issue was March or April, I'm trying to remember. The first, the first event. Yeah. March or April. Yeah. And I think, it, you know, if they had, Du Bois hadn't done any work in that area, we were, we were actually just looking at right. what we had to do. Right. And I walked underneath it and saw that the entire bottom was missing out of that culvert. And I called Tom, I'm like, this is just in really bad shape. I, I don't know if you're going to make it through. A winner, and that's when we started having these conversations. And unfortunately, we didn't. And then there, didn't one, there was one failure in early spring, and then I brought you guys those pictures in August. Yeah. And it's been on your agenda ever since August. Yeah, I guess I was thinking back to the April time frame. Yeah, that, when was, the first. that was just the culvert failed itself on its own. And we fixed it, though, right? Yeah. And we didn't notice at that time. Well, that they. they the fix was temporary anyway, but apparently when we had that rain, it took in, uh, it started to uh, erode under the uh, stone that Dubois put in, and now the stone is dropping. So, so what happened in the spring is that we, we should have had an engineering evaluation of that thing. We didn't do that. We just went in and made a repair. That's what happened. But I thought that was the sinkhole that was over there with you. Or there was a there was a small privately owned that but that was not normal. It was not it looking at the rest of the structure. Right? I can see it over there. Yeah. Yeah, it's been pretty it, it's pretty bad. So when we made the initial patch or repair, we just dumped rock in on top of the sinkhole to fix it. No one got down below it and looked at the culvert. I wasn't involved, but that's what I believe happened. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hindsight's always ten point. So the how I phrase this. The initial steps to do the, the boring and everything else to get ready for the state. Does that determine any idea of what that's gonna be? Um I, the zero connection is set between 15 and 20,000. And I think our engineering would probably be 10 to 15 because we already have the map there to get the permits and stuff. Um, well, I would say um, of the, how much, yeah, yeah. How much would you need to be approved as far as monies are concerned to get this started? I think if you approve the forty thousand? Yeah. Say thirty five or so. That would get us that's the lot. That would get them started. Um, I, I think it, they gotta do their piece and we can certainly help out in the interim. So that'll get us the engineering to go forward to the permitting process. That's right. And you haven't heard of any uh, state monies or federal monies for this. I haven't gotten a call back on any um, federal money that would be available. There, there's typically a couple of programs that you could look at. There's the structures grant program, which we talked about. Um, there's the transportation alternatives program, which the applications are due on Friday of this week. That's on my agenda. Yeah. Right. Um, um, and then there's the state bridge program. Um, typically, the best thing to do, uh, uh, 
they don't often like to talk to me as a consultant because um, they feel like it's a, a one-sided relationship. So I would suggest maybe Tom reach out to VTrans, the district manager for VTrans, explain the situation and see if they can assess where you might fall on some of those programs. They all different um, funds available. So the bridge program, for example, uh, which this would qualify for because it's more than 25 foot span, you could get up to 90% grant. That's typically like a 10 year process in my experience. You know, a project gets on the list and it, it takes a while to move to the top of the list. So that might not be the most appropriate thing here. Um, certainly worth the conversation. Um, emergency monies, they would give you emergency money to put in a temporary structure, potentially. Um, but it, it would need to be paid back. They're, they're not usually grants. Um, you can lease temporary bridges. But again, you're leasing them and then you're paying the setup fee for them. So there's costs associated with that. And it's probably comparable or maybe even more expensive than the, the 12 foot culvert that we were talking about. Um, other than that, I'm not aware of any other funding source other than the structures grant, which is up to $175,000 that you can get. Um, but those are annual and um, they're typically uh, something that gets submitted in March and released in July or so of the same calendar year. Um, I have seen towns which will hold a, a vote you know, go through that process um, as well. I make a motion to spend up to $40,000 for engineering services uh, for design and uh, work needed for a permanent bridge, for a permanent structure on Fisher Road. Second. Any more discussion on this? But I, before you make that motion, uh, do you need to add that uh, so the intent is to keep that road closed during this period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't have any around. Mm -hmm. No, I, but I just wonder if it should be part of the motion. So, so nobody says you're not. You know, that's all I'm saying. It'll be in the minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor? All right. All right. All right. Carries. It was good. Thank you. We'll get, we'll get working right away. And um, I'll, I'll hopefully have a better number in uh, two weeks. And I'll also get Tom an update as soon as we have to do the drilling. So. You see how long the drilling, the drilling takes? They just need to do about a day worth of work. They have, they have to take some samples. Um, and I'm hoping that there's ledge down there. But to be honest, we didn't really find a whole lot of ledge on the sewer project. And we did quite a lot of probes up through there. There was one section that needed to be blasted but, by Richardson Road. But everything else, we probed 16, 18, 20 feet deep. And we never found any ledge. So. What did you find for soil? Really, uh, like a glacial till. So it has some big rocks in it. And it was almost like a hard pan, really hard. It was good firm soil, so if that's the same case over there, it should be good soil to put any of these structures that you're talking about on, but usually the wet areas are where there's not so good soil. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you, Rob. Hey, thank you, Rob. Have a good evening. Appreciate you. We, we jumped over the 12, 7, 12. Uh, here, emergency medical services, RFP. So I put that uh, in your package, the draft from, I got the copy of the last RFP, and, and I talked to Chief Van Eiderstein, and he is um, adding some stuff, stuff in yellow. The only thing that is missing yet, and he was gonna get that to me, so I was gonna issue this, or bring it back to you guys. Hopefully at your next meeting, it's not due until uh, contract ends June 30th of 2021, but we could be ahead of the game here and, and get it get it bid out. So um, it's ready to go except for the stuff in yellow. Okay. Next is, uh, uh, is uh, Brandy Saxon and Carolyn Weasel Berlin Town Center. Brandy, you want to call? I am. All right. You heard another Culver story. Good for you. Yeah. So we're going to go from unplanned capital expenditures to planning for them. 
and I, I shared your your spreadsheets in advance. Great. So um, just to uh, kick off the discussion of the what you have in front of you, um, first of all, it's a work in progress. Um, we still need to do more refining of it. Um, and then I wanted to emphasize that the Capital Improvement Program um, is a planning tool. Um, having one doesn't obligate you to spend the money that you have planned out, you know, in the amounts and at the time and, uh, that you have uh, in the budget. It really is for um, for planning those expenditures, and you will as the uh, budget goes on each year, you will assess the current year and the future years that come uh, after, and this will be constantly adopted and constantly amended and revised um, and updated to reflect the current So um, you need to have a capital improvement program for the um, central area for the designation, that is one of the requirements. So um, Tom and I have and uh, Paul Simon as well have looked through um, the concept plan we've got together um, and identified a potential capital project there and also um, the infrastructure work that you have been doing and will continue to be doing or paying for uh, that benefit the town center and so that's resulted in the seven projects that you see identified um, there may be others, um, as we go through this process, we may end up having to the list or amending the list in some way, but we think that these are sort of seven major um, items that should be in the that um, help demonstrate the town's commitment to planning for the town center. Um, uh, this is usually set up with a current year, like this one is for this is that FY21 current year, and then a five-year plan going out. Uh, we've added on to this to show your prior expenditures and <clears throat> expenditures beyond that five-year window. Um, there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, one is to document the money that you have already spent on infrastructure. Um, is that um, helps bolster the case for the new town center. It also helps um, <coughs> document and track total project costs that way. And showing, we have a number of things that we just don't know the timing of. So having uh, those projects parked out there somewhere beyond FY26 means we can include them here, show them even though we don't have an idea when necessarily they might come up um, in the order of, of things. So things like the stormwater and wetland mitigation um, project, that's going to be entirely dependent on what happens from a development perspective in the new town center, the rate at which development occurs, and also what happens with um, state permitting and the three-acre rule and um, changes that might need to be made to the existing site. Um, that will, those things will all influence um, that element. Um, and, and, you know, other things I've seen here, like the um, building project you put together in the planning grant, um, we submitted that to do through that first needs assessment phase. You don't know yet what's going to come out of that. Um, and then that would inform, uh, in a future year, potentially revising this um, line item, this project item. Um, and, and giving it uh, a more realistic cost and um, timeline. So um, I guess if you have questions for me about what, what this thing is in here or what your requirements are from the New Town Center, I can take those. Did we ever get an answer to my question at the last meeting about the percentage of completion with the grant that we received? And, uh, I think so. Percentage of the grant completed? No, well, remember, we, I asked the question, I think it was the previous meeting, where I thought we'd used up 58% of the budget. 
that we had allocated for our 58 percent of the grant when that we actually spent so over that my amount. understanding is we have a twenty two thousand dollar grant that has been that's all spent plus five thousand however i guess in february uh tom showed me paperwork that um the board had approved an additional forty thousand Total project was sixty thousand. Yeah, sixty thousand. So yeah. even though our budget shows twenty two thousand, because at the time of the budget that's all we had, right. uh, we had more in February. So we're looking at spending sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, how much have we spent? In which twenty two thousand of it is under a grant. Right. So how much of it? Um, how much of the sixty thousand total have we spent so far? Twenty seven thousand. So are we fifty percent? Uh, roughly 50% of the way through their, 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 their We plan on uh, track. We plan on submitting the application uh, by in the end of the month here to uh, the uh, state agency staff. They have been take like 90 days to review it. Uh, uh, then if they have any questions, they come back and we revise it. So, so I think we're on, well on on track and budget on on that respect. Um, uh, I don't think there's any anticipation of overspending that. Um, but again, the, depending on how the uh, vote goes in no November to allow this board to, to act on certain um, uh, items that, are, that, would, that needs to be done in the, uh, uh, with respect to the new town center, like capital budget, the master, master plan, uh, if you get the, the, the ability uh, from the constituency to do that, we're hoping to go then to the uh, uh, downtown board in January or February time frame. If, if, if you don't get that, and then we have to get all these documents approved by the, by the constituency, uh, that's a March vote, so we're not going to get to the downtown board until probably like uh, May. So. Um, so when folks ask you about okay. that, go ahead. I'm sorry, Brady, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to clarify, Tom, that the capital improvement program does not need um, a vote. Okay. Um, the select board has the authority to, um, to do this. Um, and so this is not one of the things that will need a vote. Okay, thank you. Does that answer your question, Justin? Well, I was hoping Brandy would answer that and tell us whether she thought we were fifty percent. Brandy, right. how far are you? How far do you think you're in the project? How far along are we in the total yeah. project for the for the budget for our center? yeah for our budget? Oh, budget one. Yeah. Um. Well, I should be able to do this because I did my invoices this morning. Percent um, percent complete. Yeah. Are, right. Not dollar amount. I can actually just pull it back up. Project path, and then there was the nine thousand in contingency. Some of that will go towards the wetland work that's being done here in the next week or so. Um, but we have a good bulk of the work done, and so we're we're at the point now of um, it's going to be more time in terms of waiting for the state to do some things and uh, putting together documents and submitting and and. and Ways to be scheduled to go to meetings and things like that. So much of the intensive work is done. So we'll be able to we'll be able to get our application in, spending no more than sixty thousand. Did you hear? It? We're, 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 we're not gonna I, we're we're not gonna spend more than sixty thousand, correct? Uh, no, not on getting the application portion together. Um, you know, depending on what you hear back from the state, um, there could be things that come up um, that we don't know about, um, that they may request um, in addition to the scope of work we know about, but that's something that we, we have to review and you guys would have to consider how to proceed with. Um, the thing that the weapons is probably the, the, one, the one piece that that might 
trigger some addition, requests for additional information from A&R, and we're hoping that this bit of work that Malone and McRib is doing in the next couple of weeks will, will be enough. Um, but it is possible that you could, you know, I, I'm not expecting this, but something along the lines of VTrans might want an additional study or something like that. And, then we move kind of back to the drawing board to figure out how to proceed forward. But hoping that none of those sort of things happen, then yeah, this this um, this should be adequate to get us through to the finish line. You guys have any questions on the capital improvement plan? Okay. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you. Okay. Now the municipal planning grant program. Well, you want to grab a seat? Well, <laughs> say two sentences. Yeah. Uh, I will add that it's a miracle that <clears throat> we are on budget based on the curveballs that we've been throwing, I think, in this town center application. So that's a tribute to Brandy and her work that we've been able to even be close in terms of the, the completion rate and, um, and the budget. And the date, yeah. Um, but really, no, all I really am here to say is we did submit the municipal planning grant. Um, I'm not here to ask for any money. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, and so we look forward to hopefully receiving that. Maybe we can move forward with the, the planning for facilities. But, but yeah, the town center um, process has been an eye opener. There's a lot of information that, we've, that has come through. and. Um, this will be a test to the system because there's some uh, to the to that process for the downtown board because they have to there's an active 50 issue with the ball and which isn't to be considered so there's some um, it'll be interesting to see how it goes how it how they process it so anyway that's it <laughs> anything else you can think of about the no we haven't I think they have uh, 30 days to make their determination so. We should know in 30 days if we get that. Yeah. Uh, it's a $42,000 grant. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are you? What are you talking? are you talking about? I'm gonna. I'm talking about the. Uh, uh, you got in your packet the draft uh, municipal water wastewater allocation ordinance. You guys saw. It. We talked about this last month. Last month. Last meeting. Uh, this is the actual document now. Uh, the Public Work Board has reviewed it and and made some changes, recommended changes that are in this. So, uh, uh, my coach, I think you, uh, an ordinance change is two meetings, Brad, you have to award it. Yep. And so, uh, what I would like to do is uh, if you guys just take this and review it this coming week and then get me back any comments. And depending on those comments, uh, I, I may warn this for ne at next meeting for the first hearing on this this ordinance. Yep. Um, so if you can get me your comments on this, I, I appreciate it. As I said, the, the public work board uh, reviewed it and they they made their comments on it. So there any major changes or anything? Uh, well, we just. Uh, we made it a water wastewater ordinance last time language was, was just wastewater so the definitions now just are you know uh, redundant with water as, as wastewater uh, uh, we, we baked in here a a clause that if the Berlin counts that this becomes effective when Berlin town center designation is received so if it's never received this this never becomes effective um, and those are really the only the two things that the, that the public go for so if you can get your comments, uh, I'll send this to you in Word document, so you could you could just type your doc, your edits to that, and uh, and and while I'll comprise them and make a master document that you guys could all see. Anything else on this, Tom? No. The VTrans Alternative Transportation Grant? Randy mentioned that. Um, so if you may, may remember the concept plan for uh, the Berlin Town Center, there is a uh, recreational path around it. 
I'm going to apply for monies from the B Trans, this B Trans alternate uh, transportation alternatives uh, grant uh, for a study of that, um, of that, and uh, and I'm not, I don't have bones on the skeleton yet, but I'm, I'm looking at a, a scoping study on uh, size with um, what's it made up? Is it a, is it a you know, is it a gravel path? Is it a sidewalk? And 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 um, just get some monies to do the the initial design of a path. This this won't pay for the path, uh, but at least they'll it, it can get us the the, the a design. I believe they have a they have a, a meeting on October 14th, a workshop that I'm attending. So I'll get more of my questions answered then. What's the time frame for those? It's due on November 27th. And when do they decide? Uh, I think by the uh, uh, first uh, first part of 2021. Oh, good. So this was just an FYI. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Carla. Yeah. Good talk. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see here. Nothing more than B Trans alternative? That's what that was. Yep. Yep. Okay. Usage of town property by private companies, Tim and Bing. Am I supposed to come up here to the hot seat? Sure. Bar. Hi, Tim. Bar. Thanks Hello. for being here. Three candies. So, you've heard me talk about this before. Yeah, I wanted to see if we couldn't generate a policy to uh, limit usage of town property for immediate town and Berlin municipal projects. Uh, there's an awful lot. Of, I live at the corner down here, some of you may know. And um, I tell you what, without con another construction company here, there's a lot of traffic. I'm out here painting my house, and I mean, it's just tons. It's, it's, I wear earplugs outside my house. Um, so I'm just asking, we don't need, why do, we don't need private companies using our property, do we? There's plenty of room in the industrial park. This particular company, Winterset's doing work for the state of Vermont, which is really a federal project because it's federal money, predominantly. <clears throat> well, anyway, the state of Vermont has a vacant building right up the road here. You know, around the corner on industrial. <laughs> Wherever they go, that's their deal. It's not our concern. And I think that they got the approval from Tim or somebody. They were asked, you know, and they're like, yeah, no problem. Well, they didn't consider the fact that there's a historic neighborhood right here. There's an actual neighborhood. And we don't need all this extra traffic. Um, I... But, so every summer, every spring, I look forward to spring, summer, we all do, and I go outside, I'm doing a lot of stuff outdoors, and every summer there's a new company out here, line painting, tree trimming, now we got a construction company that's doing work. I'm just asking that we, any of these vendors, they stage themselves in the industrial park, where I believe they belong, not on our property. Now, this particular company, I looked it up in the AOT website, they're receiving $35,000 for their field office. How much money have they given us? Zero. So they got 35 grand, which is the right, I mean, I got no problem with that. As far as they are as a business, if I were running a business and I could get free rent right close to my construction project, I would do it. I got nothing against them. They're nice people. I just wish they were in the industrial park, not on this tiny little road. So last thing, um, one day I was out here and I actually counted just the winter set vehicles. I, get, I did it for 30 minutes, 18 different vehicles. 30 minutes went past me. <clears throat> do we need more construction vehicles going up and down here constantly? You know, dirt, noise, pollution, diesel fumes, the whole nine yards. So 
I had written up like a paragraph thing that uh, I put in my last email to you guys, you know, a proposal for a policy. I don't know if you all can vote on it or figure out a way, but I think we've just been really nice to these vendors who are doing work for us, the town, or work for the state, but it's not our job to provide them a home. That's what the industrial park is for. I got your email and I've been yeah. thinking about it, and one of the things that probably annoys me the most about it is um, the select board is, isn't involved in that decision on who is here, it's someone, I don't know who. Maybe it was the old Tim, maybe it was the new Tim, maybe it was Dana, maybe, uh, I don't know. Tim was the town administrator. It was Tim or the town administrator? I think, I think it was the town administrator. Yeah, I, I just think like if we're gonna let someone and, and take the liability of um, having people on our land, the select board should have to approve it. That could and, be a policy. That could be yeah. written in your policy. Yeah. Right. And and that for me, uh, you know, at least gives us the opportunity to say, well, you know, what's the what's the benefit here to the town or it makes sense based on this. But at least the, the people that are uh, responsible for the budget and the liability of the town are making that decision and not an employee. Mm -hmm. My assumption is if you saw that on the agenda, you'd be in for that meeting. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. My assumption is if there was a, something on the agenda where a vendor was looking to stay. Oh, right, right. Can only be in for that meeting. Yeah. I have a. I'm pretty sure you guys have been here. I have them. I, I knew you had a big agenda today, and I know you got a lot going on. I didn't bring my neighbors, you know. There's a number of my neighbors who've spoken about it, but I saw that the agenda was so big, I didn't bring them because of the whole pandemic. I know you got a lot of business to take care of, and I won't take much more any more of your time, but. Um, Thank you, and if you guys can create a policy, I would appreciate it. Um, these guys have been here for a year, not a year, they've been here for one construction season for free. I, I would love for you all to see, to, to, to come up with a policy and ask them to leave at the end of this construction season. We know they've got $35,000, dollars we will pay rent somewhere else. Again, no hard feelings against them, but I live here and I'm just trying to keep down the noise, traffic, dust pollution, et cetera. I, I, I think part, this is what I think, not what I know, Tim. Yeah. I think a part of it may be a, a quid pro quo, so so if if the, uh, uh, the, the the town garage people need a help with an excavator or need to borrow an excavator, they say, hey, let me borrow your excavator today, we're letting you, let, we're letting you, and so that may be. There might be that, and Dana did tell me that like the line painting company that was staged out here one summer, and they're like, well, they paint lines for us for free. Okay, that's nice, but you belong in an industrial park. You know, when people bid, they give you an RFP or something, when they bid a job, they have to, in that, as, oh, I got a copy of the agency, you know, there's a line item for staging their equipment, et cetera. It doesn't need to be here for free, please. <laughs> I don't know. How do you guys do that? Do you, do you do that in secret, or do you just vote on a policy, or do we make no, that a warrant? No, it's, it's warrant. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you need help writing, I'm happy to do it. I gave you a suggestion here in a paragraph, so. Um, if, if you want to draft some language for consideration, that would be most appreciated. I'll do that. Thank you, gentlemen. Very helpful. Thank, you. thank you. All right. Thank you all for your service. You. you got some big things going on. I can tell. Have a good day. Take care. All right. Thank you all. Okay. Uh, Dodge Farm Road in Waterworks Way, Roberta Haskins. Could Hello, Roberta. Could I comment on that last topic? Yes. When, remember when Maplewood was being built? There was talk of putting a driveway from Maplewood yes. to the town office. Is that still a possibility? Expedite police out here and. Um, it, it hasn't been a recent conversation. What's that? It has not been a recent conversation. Could it be? I would be surprised if it would be more than one or two at this point, here and, uh, I would be shocked. It would be nice for the police department not to have to drive around the corner and solve his problem. <laughs> Hello. Hi, nice to see you. All right, so um, do you all know where Dodge Farm Road is? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I live on Scott Hill, I'm currently building on Dodge Farm, and 
We have a homeowners association up there, and the road is currently private. Um, all the lots, despite the number of years they've been for sale, all the lots are now sold. So there's two homeowners there, three under construction, and three coming in 2021. So we will be adding to the grand list nicely. Um, Thank you. Yeah, you <laughs> And how? <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm just surprised because those lots were there for a long time, but we worked out. Hi, Brad. How are you doing? Good. So the, uh, the road is in a unique situation because it terminates at the Berlin water system. So the town has to have access to that road. And at the same time, it's uh, a private road and up to the homeowners association to maintain it, um, maintenance, plowing. Um, I don't live there currently, but it's my understanding that it's been a loose arrangement with the town where the town in the past years has plowed that road for the purpose of access to the uh, town water system. As, as we discussed, Roberto, we, 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 we don't plow it on a regular basis. We, we, we know a schedule when our guys are going up there, so we make sure it's plowed you know, right. whatever, Wednesday morning or something. So. But it's, you know, it's, it's kind of an odd agreement or arrangement because now we're going to have more people up there, school kids, people going to work. So we're now heading into winter and talking about, um, you know, do we hire a subcontractor? Is that going to work in conjunction with your plowing? So we got together and we decided to ask the town if they would be willing to take over Dodge Farm Road and make it a town road. Um, I did speak to- And, and Waterworks Way, correct? And Waterworks Way. Now Waterworks Way, I, I didn't realize, is, is it, um, I'm asking Tom, is that a right away over lot nine? Because lot nine is on both sides of the road. I'm I don't know where lot nine falls, but it's it's a, we have a right of way over. So it's okay. so it's just. So as I noted here, the owner of lot nine. <laughs> I technically don't have any um, reason to plow that. My driveway is going to be right before the gates or right before that little stretch. So and Roberto supplied a map so that Tom supplied that map. That's my well, that's right. Is that what I supplied the <laughs> I showed you that that's yeah, the okay, nice one right. map. So it terminates uh, you know you see drive up Dodge Farm, there's a rotary, there's another driveway off the rotary and then my driveway is going to be to the left, and then it continues on to the gates of the water system. So technically, I don't think I have any obligation to plow that portion of lot nine. I will turn left and go up my driveway. Right. Um, so that's, uh, I'm here on behalf of the homeowners to ask the town if they'd be willing to take the road over. I know there's several steps to go through, but I thought this was a starting point. Don Marsh was the engineer. Um, he can provide information on the specs. I did find out from someone else that it was built to A76 standards. It is two 10-foot lanes with two, foot, two feet of shoulders, 24 inches wide. I would have to get, you know, yeah. Roberta, A76 is also the standards that the town has adopted. That's what I, mm -hmm. I did get that verbally. Of course, we you know, want the definite uh, specifications from Don Marsh. Um, so we'd like to, you know, plant the idea here and see if the town would be willing to move forward with it. Um, what would be the next steps, what we would need to do. But I think with eight homes up there, it, uh, you know. As we discussed, I really think this board would need a certification from your engineer saying that it was built to, to standards. Um, whatever uh, certification that he did 
when it was when it was originally built. I'm assuming that he, that the owners at that time, he he supplied them with a, a certification package because that's what they wanted it built to. So. Um, so that would have gone to the developers. I, I would think so. Yeah. But you said Don Marsh is the. Don Marsh is the engineer mm -hmm. and. At the time, Peter Shoulder and Jack Barnes were yeah. the developers. Yep. Well, you know that. I know Jack, yeah. 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 So, uh, so uh, again, that what Don supplied to his client is private. It's not. It's not public. I don't think. I don't think the town has been given that. So, mm -hmm. that, that, that may be a fee, or the or the owners of that document may say, no, you can't do it. But you could ask. You know, I'm you know, sure. We could yeah. Do it. yeah. So just, just so I understand, the gate's about here? The gate's right. The gate is? Right about here. Just out the tree line. Yep. Right about in that area. Mm -hmm. So you're asking us to take over this road over here. Right out. So it's from Scott Hill. Scott Hill's not on here, John. Scott right. Hill. It's the bottom of the line, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. So, Tom. This is what I was pointing at here. So they want us not to take that piece. I think that's a driveway. But that's all. That says Dodge Farm Road all the way out. Yeah, so. but, it's, but it's. I don't think it's. I think that's a driveway. Don't, see that? The basically, uh, those are the road. Those the people right bought two lots and they built one house out in the very end. What piece are you asking us to take? We would go up here, and yeah. So this goes off to this house here. They bought two lots. Right here, where where it uh, goes into the white town. Yeah, there's a little rotary right here. Yeah. So at that the rotary is where Dodge Farm would end, or yeah. I would think, and then it becomes waterworks. Okay. Right. Right here, about here. That's yeah. where the gates are. Do we have a policy that addresses the adoption of the road? believe we do when we're working on road policy. Yeah. But the, um, so Roberta, what you're asking for is right from Scott Hill up through to that rotary and up into the, then the town and taking uh, also plow war works way where we uh, needed it. I think she's asking that Brad. 87? Brad? Yeah. I don't She's asking for Waterworks Way to be a town maintained road, not just when we need to get up to our well site. I would say up to the gates, but yeah. can it be a town road if it crosses over private land? All town roads are on private land. That's what right rights of way, right of way right. are. Okay. Yes. okay. Yeah. So I, I would say that would be Dodge Farm onto Waterworks Way yeah. right up to the. Or that's, what the gates. that's what you're asking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, after the gates, does that revert back to, I think, where lot nine ends, does that revert back to the actual Dodge Farm? Uh, uh, Lauren? Uh, yep. And Kristen? No. Yes, correct. Okay. They own that now. Jack sold it back to them. Okay. So you think there's a policy? We were working on one. No, I thought, we, well, don't we have one already for private? For the to take over? Because this would be a class three, not a class four. Well, I think the policy simply states it has to be to the state standard. Right. Well, to be considered, right? Yeah. Considered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why don't I look at that policy and get it to you guys? Yeah. And, um, and, you, and you believe the engineering was done already and that it was built to spec? That's what I was told, and I'd be happy to get that. I'm trying to think. We, when we took over that, I wasn't involved in it. Road up on Vine Street. Road on Heights, where I live. Right. Yeah, I remember when you put me through that. It was, it was quite an ordeal. We ended up having to go through the town attorney. You had to look at everything, and then we had to bring it up to a certain level that you wanted, and you inspected. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. that road there was low. No. Yeah. So, was, we was poor. so we brought it up to the level that you wanted. Yeah. And but, but that was a paved road, right? No. 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 Okay. no, that was just to gravel it so we would take and plow it. If I remember right, 
when they put that development in, there was some agreement that the town would take it over. Eventually. Yeah. Anyway, Can you sing on the ordinance? I think so. I remember Partridge Farm, Partridge. Yeah. Up there. Okay. Um, so, how many dwellings are here? Four? Currently, there are two occupied. Yep. And this uh, map that you're looking at is what uh, Tom just did to apply for E911 for three more residences that are currently under construction. And there's three not on the map. From and then there's three. To, to I knew there were six lots, I thought, right? But someone bought a couple lots, right? As, as yep. one. So down on uh, what you could see from Scott Hill is number three. Uh, I don't, there is no number one. Number two is resides with the farm still. Three is the red house you could see from Scott Hill. Four, five, and six have been sold. They're on the right side. Well, actually, they straddle the road. Seven and eight is way back here. They own both. And this is nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, I see. And that's it. So there'll be a total of eight dollars, I believe, is what your letter states. Yeah. Well, let's, again, the zoning has changed up there. These were five acre lots. They're now one acre lot zoning, so there could be more development. Okay. But I believe everybody's maintained their five acres, and I just applied for a boundary adjustment yeah. to increase mine. Oh, All I'm saying is there's a potential. Yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking in other towns, they're trying to get rid of one house and two, two and three house roads that yeah. are a pain in the butt to file. Yeah. But in this case, there's potentially eight, if not more, in the future. Big difference. Big yeah. difference. Yeah, and the fact that it you know, terminates with the water system. So, if, water system. if the town takes over that road, how will that affect the assessment up there? They'll be on a public road instead of a private. I, I don't have an answer to that question. I'm not an assessment guy. It's a valid question. Yeah, but I don't, I mean, um, it'll probably increase the assessment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would. Right? I think it would too. Well, when they changed my driver, it did not. It did not. It oh, well, well, we're plowing it. Yeah. Thank Sanding it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's still, whatever it is, it's, it's still, yeah. still worth it to the, to, I'm sure everybody would be in agreement with it. It's still worth it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, you've got a bunch of, of residents in charge of keeping care of, you know, on the road, none of us really understand the terminology or... we got a call where you're going to work on it. <laughs> That's something. We're up for help. <laughs> so I'll find a policy, distribute to you guys, I'll send you a copy of it, okay. Roberta, and uh, this will be on next, hopefully next meeting's agenda. Okay. Hey, um, different yeah. in, in the meantime, I should provide the... Engineering report for Okay. So that's fairly simple. All right. Great. Thanks for coming in, everybody. You're Thank welcome. You. Good to see you all again. Nice to see you, too. Take care. Take care. Yep. Thank you. Uh, police chief recruitment and term police chief search. Tom? Uh, the, um, the hiring committee, police chief hiring committee is meeting tomorrow night. Uh, they, uh, my expectation is that they will come with a short list um, and then uh, schedule uh, the greater hiring committee together and interview candidates in person. So. Um, the, the, this group is doing good work. They're ahead of schedule. And um, um, we hope to, their hope is to bring a, to bring to the select board a preferred candidate sometime in early November. So, great. Bring what? 
a, a preferred candidate in early November. I thought, and I could be wrong, but I thought we were trying to bring the select board at least two candidates, if not three. I don't think that's how that, how the, but that's not how the, it's set up, but we can easily change that. It's your, it's your hiring. Right, no, that's just the way I understood. So uh, that was one of the, the questions that I had was, uh, I was talk, talking about the process today, and I was like, I wonder if the big groups interviewing these, these, you know, next round candidates all again, and so the select board will do a third round, and the, the, the larger group will, you know, have a preferred, but let the select board kind of have the three to choose from. Well, I think I think for safety's sake, you have to have more than one because if oh, you turn down the wages, yeah, you need to have a fallback position. It's yep. good to have at least two or three. Right. Yep. I mean, basically, what you're doing is you're cutting the list in half, yep. and then you, if the preferred one takes the takes the bait, so to say. Then, Ultimately, select board makes the decision. Yeah. Right. I just want to. Make, yeah. I. I guess I worry about what he just said. Is getting you know bringing a preferred candidate and then finding out like it's not enough. Like or no, yeah, like you that. know they were just seeing if they could get it and they're really happy where they are. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, I mean, we cut it down to three, two or three. That'd be. I mean, you got a fifty-fifty chance. Anything else on this Tom? No. Okay. Um, the interim. We're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna discuss that in executive session. Yes. Okay. Uh, administrative recruitment. Uh, that process has started as well. Um, uh, trying to now schedule with um, uh, the group to they want to they want to meet and uh, go over questions on how how the process is, is going to work so that'll that'll be their first meeting hopefully that'll be this week and, and then interviews can begin in earnest next week do we have one select board member or two on that two. okay and uh, stormwater treatment so you may recall this is i'm keeping this on the agenda just so i don't forget um uh, we are still waiting back from the um, uh, the grant funder about the additional dollars uh, uh, Pam from our regional planning commission has said they have uh, verbally approved that their exec the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission Executive Committee is meeting next week and this is on their agenda and then I think once it gets out of out of their agenda that that. Uh, Central Vermont signs off on it. The, the 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 grant funder will will sign off on it, and we'll have a document saying that uh, grant funds are covering it's no additional cost to the town of Berlin. And so, hopefully, next meeting we will sign the the, the bid award and the contract. Okay. Good enough. Uh, local government expense reimbursement grant. So I. Uh, I, I told you that the, uh, Berlin has been awarded about 70k in in um, uh, local government expense reimbursement grants. That's COVID-related expenses. We had a staff meeting last Wednesday or last Thursday. I can't remember. And so we have a um, uh, beginnings of a uh, wish list. Uh, there's there's two pieces of stuff that we've actually already spent on COVID and a, a wish list. Uh, we're uh, you guys appointed John to be the uh, be Solomon on this wish list, and so uh, I expect to get that uh, have this, this conversation with John this week yet. Uh, hopefully by Wednesday, and then uh, uh, there's some projects, and if uh, everybody's okay, then we're just gonna we'll work those projects and get, get going on it. So, Diane, how many how many are on that list? Do you think? On the, yeah, how much dollars you need? No, how many, many how many individual projects? Like okay, let's see. Um, we've got one that's just kind of what we've already spent, which is kind of small, and then we've got one, two, three, four, at least four or five other projects. And we know we have. know two more that's not on the list yet. Yeah, so, there is so, we're talking. Yeah. So John will have like six or seven projects. Yeah. Okay. 
Did you get anything from the fire department here? I, he was here, Joe was here, and did he? I haven't seen he him. Did, he did, but he said he's working on it. Uh, Ashley, are you on the phone call? I am. Okay. All right, thank you. I think you're up here. Yep. All right, Ashley. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about um, the Municipal World General, I'm uh, sorry, Grants and Aid Project and Program that um, happens yearly. I'm just going to give you a bit of background information. Um, the Grant and Aid pro uh, Program was started in 2017 by Vermont um, DEP to provide financial assistance for implementation of the Municipal Roads General Permit, also known as MRGP, which intended to achieve significant reductions in stormwater-related erosion for municipal roads, both paved and unpaved. So this is a grant that is non-competitive. It's um, a participatory program. Oh, sorry. Um, it's to municipalities to implement road drainage best management practices in accordance with the MRGP standard. Um, the program requires 20% local match in the form of either cash or in-kind services, and the work is overseen by the Regional Planning Commission um, through VTRAN. Um, the initial offer to Berlin, which might change based on the amount of municipalities that actually say they are going to um, their intent is roughly $17,000, and it's based on the estimated hydraulically connected municipal road miles, which are your town roads adjacent to our bisecting perennial and intermittent streams, wetlands, lakes, and ponds. Um, and there is roughly between 26 and 27 miles total in your town that are hydraulically connected based on the road erosion inventory that CBRPC did for you earlier this year. Um, some of the best management practices that are eligible for funding under the grant program are grass and stone line drainage ditches, turnouts and other disconnection and infiltration practices, removal, removal of greater burns and lowering of high road shoulders, improvement and replacement of drainage culverts and installation of culvert headwalls and outlet stabilization, um, stabilization of gully erosion on class four roads, and stabilization of catch basin outlets. Um, again, uh, the towns must work with their regional planning commission to A, sign a letter of intent that specifies expectations to identify specific road segments to target as part of their project and determine appropriate best management practices. Secure technical assistance if necessary. Um, report on the project using a DEC report template that the RPCs have. Um, must take photos before and after of the work that you're going to the location um, and the work that you're going to be doing. Um, and have a secure reimbursement of up to 80% of the implementation content, uh, cost. Um, right now, um, after CVRPC has done your road erosion inventory, which I'm afraid I haven't sent to you yet, so I apologize, that'll be very shortly. Um, there are 414 hydraulically connected road segments in Berlin, including class four roads. Of these, 71% do not fully meet standards, which equals about 18.9 miles of road eroding into the stream. And there are 17 hydraulically connected stormwater outlets in Berlin. And of these, 52% or nine outlets were found to not fully meet standards. So actually, guys are in pretty good shape road-wise. There are 18 segments. And the segments are roughly 300 feet in length that have been identified as very hard, very high priority, um, so that the score does not meet with a slope greater than 10%. Um, and these segments, which we recommend the town focus on addressing um, with the um, grants and aid grant, um, should help um, with the road erosion in the future. Um, and the main issues that we highlighted during the road erosion inventory were um, poor drainage, uh, mm, 
not very good crown and um, firm windrow issues. So Ashley, <laughs> Ashley, Ashley, yeah. can, can you send that prior prioritization list to us for review? Yeah, I'll be sending the report tomorrow morning. Thank you. So this, this um, and this Florida Road Grant and Aid um, program um, comes around yearly, um, but the letter of intent is due on October 30th if the town is interested in doing it. And there's no penalties if you don't do it this year, but it does, I mean, obviously it gives you money to help pay for that those road fixes. Has Berlin historically participated? Yes. Yes. Um, I, I'm being told yes. <laughs> yes, I think you have. Okay. And that letter of intent is, uh, you sent that to me already, correct? Yes. So that would need to be on the, the next slide. Yeah, that Questions of Ashley? I'm sorry? I'm just asking if I have questions. Nobody has any questions, Ashley, so thank you for your time. Oh, thank you. Have a great evening. You as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, approve of licenses, permits, and vouchers. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 21-07 for payroll from September 13, 2020 to September 26, 2020, paid on September 30, 2020, in the amount of $38,136.44, and payroll warrant 21-G07 with check 2553 to 2596 in the amount of $102,608.72. September reconciled bank statements for the general fund, sewer commission and water division, and August general journal entries and tax admin correction. A second. Second. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, let's see here. Officer training, John. Yep, we have a, a police officer that's asking to go to training. It's eighty-two dollars. It's towards the end of uh, November. Um, it is a. Well, I want to make sure I get the name of the training right. It's a. Death investigation training. Um, he's, he's an officer that's been here for a while. It was recommended by a supervisor. Um, as long as there's coverage, I don't see a problem with it. What's that? We'll do a $82 training for the police officer. Second. I second the motion. Yeah. And they're well within their budget for training this year, so. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Uh, Bast and Town Roads. Justin? Yeah, I wanted to uh, let you know we've been doing a lot of research and a lot of, uh, spent a lot of time with private landowners and things like that. I believe um, utilizing the existing land that the town of Berlin has, like the, the tower roof um, that's been set aside specifically for uh, ATVs and snow, it says right on there. Um, we have connected all the way to the Northfield trail system, right, with the exception of small piece of road over by the pond. I'd like the board, I know it's been a topic in the past, but I think it's, it's the, especially given this year and the way that you're going to see a lot more outdoor recreation, I think it's a good, we had organizations participating in our outdoor trail system, which like Vast is very interested in, you got to start somewhere and you know, maybe make decisions after that, but they can provide funding for bridges and other items. Um, or at least assist with it, whether it's just labor and helping reduce the expense and not actually monetary. Okay. Um, but, I mean, really we need, in order to tie the Berlin trail system 
being with the Northfield system over the hill. Yep. We need to get a small section of Black Road and both Brookfield Road open to the Irish Hill parking area. From where to where? From basically the beginning of Black Road, where it took, it's still Class 4, on the Burlington Pond side of Black Road. Yep. So currently the trail terminates in Josh Walker's field. It comes across here, it goes up behind my house into Josh's field. There's an old bridge that will get replaced. So from like Josh's field in the class four section, like the trail. Yep. Because people are always hiking and walking on the ground pond anyway. From there down to Irish Hill. And it's a make, it's actually a, a pretty big crucial connector for that trail system. So I think you get a lot of, from a vast standpoint, support. I think um, it, yeah, I think it's the place to start. I mean, the last thing Vass wants to do is ride on the roads because it's such a limited season because of dirt and things like that. I think once it's open, I think we might have better luck getting some of the adjacent landowners to right. allow a trail. So we don't need to use the road, but I think that would I think it's a good start. It well, certainly gets more people over here. I think if we go you know, down the road like you're saying, it might that if there was a trail right through there, it'd be great for recreation in the summer too, to keep people off the road system. Yeah. But I believe the conservation committee took this up at the last meeting and and I, I believe they're planning on visiting the board next meeting too, so. Okay. Huh. So, so what, is, what does that mean? Uh, oh, okay. So is there some, there's somebody out there that has interest in it. I, I really don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, I mean, we're, get, we're getting pretty close to the snow machine season. That's yeah. the, and if there's bridges to rebuild and things like that. Is anyone strongly opposed to it? To me, to me, when we look at it, I mean, we are getting close to the planning, getting close to it. Um, we've made it that this is always going to be a hurdle yeah. to tie in, no matter if we stayed off the Berlin conservation land and had private landowners all the way through. It's still going to be a hurdle to get through that section for all of us. Yeah. And I think that if we did that and we open that up, it's positive direction. And then it'll help things get moving quicker on the other end standpoint with the organizations. And may allow us to plan and save some money on the bridge investments that we have coming up as well. Yeah. So I would I would like the board to move forward sooner than later. Um, and it doesn't mean that we don't have to talk to the conservation board down the road on how maybe we navigate through that section. But I'd like the board to move forward sooner on that piece of it because it shows the direction to the other people that would partner with us on this process. And like what was said with the new zoning amendments that we're looking at, I mean, if there is a true issue with it, the voters can take it up and yeah. if they disagree. So. Yeah. I make a motion to approve opening the, do I need Burlington Town Forest too? Or just? I don't think we need a motion on that because we already have it. So opening Black Road and uh, Brookfield Road from Irish Hill to the end of the Class 4 on Black Road to Snow Machines from December 15th to, I believe it's April 15th, which is the, the vast season. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my, my intent is to work with the Conservation Board to make it Absolutely. as least impactful as possible to, mm -hmm. to uh, uh, make sure that we're sharing the trails and that they're used by everyone. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Those carries? Uh, let's see here. What do we got left here? Uh, 820. Right. Approval of select board minutes September 8th, 2020, and September 21st, 2020. Motion to approve the minutes Second. of the 8th and the, what was it? 920. Second. 
Any further discussion? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, let's see here. Roundtable, verb, unemployment insurance. I have those. Those are my four issues, and so I'll just I'll go through them. So sure. I put in your packet. Uh, these are our, these are unemployment comp, uh, compensation for us. Sounds like rates are going up. So just for your budget purposes. Can I share this with you, Diane? Mm -hmm. Let me get this with you. Diane, you'll you'll work that in when we when we go through the budget. You'll have it. Okay. Um, uh, I spoke with Tim. Uh, we're to get together some temporary drivers for for winter driving for snow plowing. So if if somebody calls off, one of our employees calls off sick, he has a pool of people to go to. So we're working through that. They're they're all going to be vetted, uh, drug tested, and you know so. Um, so uh, just let you know that, that that's going on. Well, I just, I'll come, can I comment on that real quick? He explained what happens to the groups. I don't know if you, any of you guys fully know. If they get one person out with just the four person crew, it actually turns like a four hour loop into about a six, seven hour loop, yep. which can be really impactful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially this winter with the stuff, if someone ends up getting sick and they have to be out for a week it's a good idea to have you know a backup roster i just don't want i just don't want them to start getting called in for like oh we're going to get a big storm let's call in three extra guys right. do we have so many pieces of equipment that's the beauty of it. yeah and he and i've had that conversation yeah, yeah. and you're correct that we sore so uh, i put in your packets the uh, uh, the uh, public board is applying for clean water state revolving uh, loan fund monies to do uh, planning and final design of a uh, relatively small wastewater collection system from Payne Turnpike North down cross town to uh, Bosworth Road, cross, crossing the bridge. It's been in the works. The Public Works Board has been looking at this for about four or five years. Um, with clean uh, state, clean water state revolving loan funds, uh, they uh, they'll give you 50% of it of the, the final design. And the engineering and final design, they'll, they'll pay for it. They'll give you a grant for it. Um, and so uh, last year, I, I wrote this and a couple other projects up for their consideration, and, and they approved it. The state approved it, this project to go on to that. So uh, we'll take it the next step. This is RFQ. We have to go to our request for qualifications on engineering firms. The uh, uh, public park board will review those. Pick a preferred vendor and, and then keep the process going. So, um, it's a good project way way to get some grant grant monies into the project without having to dip into uh, in the, into the their reserves. So I'm curious because I when the water project was going up honestly by my house, I asked why the sewer wasn't on there. And I called Wayne and he said. We're crossing the bridge and the water, that's that's really the biggest largest expense to that. I mean I think we've all heard rumors about the mobile home park having issues up there. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's fact fiction, whatever, but the city don't want to participate. They they told me straight out they don't want to participate in this. So um, I, I don't know what we can do. Yeah, no, what I'm asking is I just wondered why if you're doing that, you wouldn't go up to the top of the T where there's other, you know, there's land that's being that could be developed up there. I think the well, part of it is the, 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 the expense of doing it. Um, you need a you need a, a finite amount of people to to make it affordable. Um, and again, the, this is something that the public work board's been working on about five to six years. But I I I think that's the sense is that to to go much further it's just the, the cost is going to be that much greater than what there's after the little home park two homes three homes there for 1500 feet something like that uh 
because it's a it's it's a, I, I, that's my thing. It's just purely a, a cost standpoint. What is it per hundred feet or per thousand feet? Or you don't know. Yeah. It's not. We, we've got a we've got a, a estimated budget for for this area. Yeah. About two hundred sixty-five thousand. Yeah, I didn't know. It's just like with fiber, you know, you X amount of dollars per mile. I didn't know if you knew. Yeah. Or so two hundred sixty thousand goes from where? Where? From um, uh, Painter Pike North to Bosworth. So basically, you're saying we're into the services, not speculation. Pardon me. We're more into providing a service, not not uh, speculation. Yeah. 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 No, I just wonder what the rational thought process was behind it and why that was the end point. So, makes sense. Anything else on the sewer improvement? No, you may just be seeing it. So. Okay. And state police? So uh, these are just just a uh, heads up that the uh, Vermont State Police are going to come and do a presentation on their new project here for you folks next meeting and the conservation committee wants to be on the agenda as well to talk about all the things that they want. Okay. okay. Justin? You need a round table? Nope. I think we handle it. Well? Nothing for me tonight. Thank you. John? At the next meeting, I would like the select board uh, to consider an action item, item of prorating select board pay based on the number of meetings that they attend. So I don't know what it is that we get paid per year, but that could be divvied up into X number of meetings. I'm talking about regular standard meetings. Mm -hmm. So if I missed half of them, I would only get half that pay. I think that's a, probably a fair thing to consider. I'm asking just to, for consideration and to possibly act on it at the next meeting. Um, and I, I'd love to start seeing department head reports. It doesn't have to be long. Um, it could be once a month. Have Tim come in, have the police chief come in, have someone come in and talk to us about their department so we can hear firsthand from them. Um, what's, what's going on? What's that? Is there a format that these guys can follow? You know, did you have a? Um, usually, it's you know, you know what we've done for the. Generally, the way I've done it is what we've done for the previous two weeks and what we're looking at for the next two. And that way you can you kind of have some kind of perspective on, hey, we're going to be you know, yeah. focused on grading these eight roads over the next two weeks. And that we have some kind of idea of what the work plan is. Um, and with the police department, it's, you know, we've seen three robberies in the past two weeks. Uh, you know, we're going to be looking out for these types of things short term because of or, you know, we've had two more officers leave and we need to post positions. I just want to make sure, like, the select board has a full full visibility into all those things. Simple scheduling at the first meeting of the month for the road crews here. Yeah, I don't, I don't care how. I mean, in a rotation automatic. Right? Yeah, in Norfield, sometimes, you know, they would come in. Sometimes it would just be a written report that week, like, especially during the winter with. Uh, the, the road crew being out early mornings and late nights, they don't want to come to a select board meeting and sit for two hours. So we had to do paper, you know, have them write a one page on what was going on. Sense. Um, yeah. But, you know, try to get them in from time to time to give them, mm -hmm. give them some time to talk to Okay. Yeah. And I think that was it. Well, that done? Yep. Thank you. So the, the select board pay is that a, a line item on next? Okay.